that as well. Um, then in chapter 14, you'll be thinking about socio-emotional development at the same age range. Um, and in chapter uh, 14, it starts out by talking about temperament. And you remember from the earlier chapters that temperament is a biologically based way of interacting with the environment. It's not biologically determined, but it does have a strong biological component. So when you think about adult personality, part of the way your personality has developed is based on the temperament that you were born with, part of which was biological. It doesn't mean that it can't change, but um, as we get older, our personalities become more and more stable. Um, in the next set of chapters, we'll be talking about uh, the Big Five theory of personality, and so we'll talk more about personality when we get to that. Um, Jean, Jean Twenge um, is uh, referenced in this chapter. She's written a book and she's done a lot of research on the uh, what she calls Generation Me or Generation Z, um, and uh, in particular, looking at narcissism and whether or not today's um, emerging adults um, think that they're way better than previous generations and is that accurate? Um, and so if you're interested in that, I'd encourage you to look at that research. She's written a book, um, I grabbed it right before this because I was reminding myself what the title was, um, called Generation Me, and it's been reissued um, a number of times. And so if you're interested in that, um, you can um, send, me a, um, send me an email and I'll be glad to um, send you a link to the book. I'm not in the book sales business, but I have a, there are a couple of books that are coming up in this chapter and in the upcoming chapters um, that I think are very readable. And so if you're interested in more along those lines, um, something to do when there's nothing to do, right? That's just what every student wants is some more optional reading. Um, then uh, the next part of the chapter talks about interpersonal attraction. Um, and Aaron's research on interpersonal attraction, and I've asked you to engage with the 36 questions that lead to love. Um, but they were actually doing research on that, and they, were, they wanted a measure of interpersonal closeness that they could use in the lab. Um, it's hard to get uh, people who are close, you know, to, to get 100 people to participate in research and then um, find some way to make them feel close to each other and then uh, vary some other things and see what happens. So um, that was what they were after. Um, and then it turned out that people, that what they learned from it was that uh, people actually did become close just by virtue of those interviews. And so um, I think it's an interesting thing to, to read about. Try it out if you want to, but you don't have to try it out. Um, the other thing that I would encourage you to do if you haven't already read chapter 14 is um, jot, before you read it, jot down if you are going to pick um, somebody to date, somebody to be attracted to, even if that's not on your radar right now, um, what are the 10 things that are the most important to you? Um, and then as you're reading the chapter, think about whether or not those things really are predictive of relationship success um, or, or those kinds of things. Um, next, uh, Sternberg's Triangular Theory of Love. I have another video that I made uh, a number of years ago, a couple of years ago, on Sternberg's theory of love, and the theory hasn't changed, and I haven't changed, so I'm not going to re-record that. Um, I'll ask you to watch that one separately, but it's an interesting theory. Just just remember that those three components, uh, passion, intimacy, and commitment, are the components, but those are not the types of love. The types of love are based on the presence or absence of those three things. Um, next, it talks about uh, relationships and uh, you know, cohabiting and different kinds of marriage relationships, divorce, um, many things that you've heard about, read about, perhaps experienced in your own family or in yourself um, or in relationships of your own. Um, and uh, the research of John Gottman, I think, is really interesting at this point. Um, he's done, he and his colleagues have done a lot of research at the University of Washington <clears throat> on the predictors of relationship quality. Um, and what they've done is bring people into a lab situation, for example, um, and have them sit together in a living room type situation and talk to each other. Um, and sometimes they're asked to talk about something that, that they've just been doing together or something that they've done apart or something that they disagree on or something that they agree on. Um, and what they found over lots and lots of research is that um, the way couples talk to each other is strongly predictive of relationship success. Um, Gottman has said that um, based on his research, he can listen to a couple talk to each other for 15 minutes and predict with 80 to 90% accuracy um, and sometimes higher whether or not they'll still be married in five years. Um, so um, that's, it's not really a superpower, it's based on research, um, but think about how distracting that would be if you were just trying to have a nice quiet dinner at the bar and uh, the couple next to you is talking to each other and you know that they're not gonna be married if they keep doing that. So um, if you're interested in that research, there, there's a lot of published um, research in journals. Um, he's also published a number of books and he's got workshops and videos and I've got a couple of videos in the online class that you can watch. Um, but uh, the four things that he says are the most destructive um, to a relationship, uh, contempt, distancing, um, or stonewalling, contempt, criticism, and 
uh, defensiveness. Um, and of those four, the one that's the sort of the death knell, the one that's the most damaging to a relationship is contempt. Um, but he also gives you some information about how you can work your way out of that. And I think he's a strong believer that people can change and relationships can be redeemed, but you need to know how to do that. You need to know what's going wrong in order to fix the things that are going wrong and doing do more of the things that are going right. So that's the research of John Gottman. Um, there's one book that he's written. I don't have a copy of it right in front of me. It's the seven principles of making a successful marriage, I think, but it starts out with seven principles. And, and I recommend that one if you're interested in um, how he's done the research and what they have found and then some tips for uh, personal application in that way. Um, I think that's it for chapters 13 and 14. Um, the next set of chapters will be continuing on with some of these themes um, later in adulthood. Um, and as always, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks. Bye.